Is there a maximum amount of calories that you can burn in one day? For example, is there a line of diminishing return after a certain point? If you're saying like, okay, I'm gonna put myself in an extreme deficit and then I'm also gonna exercise a whole bunch, is there really a line with how much you can burn in a single day? And the short answer with that is, I'm sure you could go on and on and on, but there is sort of an economy of scale that also happens with your body. And we're gonna talk about something that's very interesting called the constrained energy model. And I've got some graphs to show you that help make some sense. And the good news is, out of this, it's not gonna discourage you. It's actually going to encourage you to look at your fat loss in a slightly different way. Now, after today's video, our sponsor is Create, which is a really cool allulose sweetened creatine gummy. So 1.5 grams of creatine monohydrate per gummy, which is nice because personally, I don't like to take a whole lot of creatine. Like the most I'll usually take is five grams. I have taken more, but a lot of times I like to take maybe three grams. So this way I can low dose my creatine and dose it throughout the day so I get less water retention. I'm very sensitive to the water retention with creatine. So these Create gummies, they have a watermelon flavor, they have a blue raspberry flavor, and they have a traditional orange flavor. All of them are amazing, but I don't take a creatine gummy just for the taste. I take it because I actually want the benefit. And there is probably nothing except for caffeine that is more studied as an ergogenic aid for recovery, for inflammation, when it comes down to just overall strength, potential mass building, and brain function than creatine. So this is just a fun way to get it in. It tastes good and it's easier to dose, which I really like. So that link is in the top line of the description and guess what? It's for 50% off. So 50% off, go ahead and use that link in the top line. So look at the graph that's on the screen right now. Okay, that image that is on the right, that is what is called the constrained energy model. And essentially what it tells us is that our body sort of adapts with our activity levels to make sure that we typically are burning or our total expenditure is within a pretty narrow range. It's not like you could say, hey, Bob, you're capped at 5,000 calories. So once you're running and you pass 5,000 calories, it's all a waste of time. No, you can go beyond that. This is looking at pretty large populations, actually. There was one particular study that was published in uh, Current Biology. Took a look at a few hundred people across five different populations. Then there was another study in Current Biology that looked at uh, larger data pools, and they found that populations that were more exercise active, more physically active, did not actually burn more calories or have to more total energy expenditure than those with less physical activity. So the exercise is not always what's driving more total energy expenditure. So this whole constrained energy model tells us that the more we exercise, the less we burn from our daily tasks. Now it begs the question, is it because after we exercise, we're just fatigued? So like our body doesn't, we don't fidget as much, we don't, uh, we're maybe less likely to opt or elect to do things that are more active. If we burned a thousand calories of exercise, are we gonna just be slowly mowing the lawn and maybe not like mowing the lawn with our elbows flailing, right? Like those things sound silly, but throwing elbows while you're mowing the lawn might account for an extra 50 calories burned whilst mowing the lawn. Now that's just for 30 minutes out of the day. You get what I'm saying here. Now, it doesn't really answer the question, like do we have a maximum amount of calories that we can burn in one day? No, we don't have a maximum amount of calories that we can burn in one day. I do think that we could continue on. But we also have to remember that we are a tightly regulated system and our body's goal is to keep us alive, right? So that if we start doing things that make it look like we are putting our body in jeopardy, our body will do what it can to kind of preserve that. So if I get up in the morning and I run and burn 2,000 calories, my body's gonna say, hey, we're not gonna burn as much from your regular activity today because we wanna keep you in this tightly regulated range because Thomas, we know you do stupid things and we don't want you doing these stupid things because we want you to be alive, right? Now, on the contrary, if I woke up and I chose to just, I don't know, I'm just gonna go for a little walk today. My body's gonna say, well, you know, we have this system and process in place where we want you to move a certain amount. So because it's tightly regulated, 
we're gonna kind of give you this little cattle prog here and you're just gonna, you're gonna want to go do the dishes and you're gonna want to go, uh, I don't know, go for a walk and you're gonna want to maybe take the stairs. Some things that maybe even end up psychological. I mean, the body's complex, right? But we might also just fidget because the body's like, hey, this is the tight range that we need to be in. Now, that being said, there's some evidence that suggests that two people that weigh the same with similar body masses and fat mass and muscle mass can have up to a 2,000 calorie variance per day in just their non-exercise activity thermogenesis alone. So you need to kind of look at yourself. Ask yourself this, are you one of these people that if you don't exercise and you do uh, just regular household tasks, like, do you stay pretty lean? Or are you someone that like the moment you don't exercise, you, you balloon up pretty easy? That can tell you a lot about just where your neat stands and how much exercise you should do. For me personally, nowadays, I probably could stand to not exercise and I actually find that I actually lose more fat sometimes when I actually reduce my exercise. Now, my wife is an interesting case too. My wife doesn't even work out all that much. She walks a ton, she's always active. I don't really see her sitting down all that much. And she's in incredible shape. And it's just interesting because her non-exercise activity thermogenesis is naturally just so high. But if she exercises too much, like she tries to come and do something with me and be in the gym for an hour and a half or something, then I definitely notice she's not as active. Not even because she's tired and laying on the couch, but because I just notice the little things. Like, oh, maybe she's not up and moving around quite as much, right? So you have to ask yourself those questions. That being said, if we go back to this chart once again, okay, I'll bring it back on the screen, it is clearly more important to increase our baseline activity than our exercise activity. And this is for a number of reasons. For one, it seems to be the bigger lever that we can pull for fat loss, it definitely does. So just moving throughout the day, walking, doing dishes, things like that is gonna burn over the aggregate a monumental amount of calories compared to just your sliver of a couple hundred calories of exercise. And I hate to break it to you, your exercise probably isn't burning as many calories as you think. You're burning more calories just being alive. So this is great news because this is easy for a lot of people to really lever. Like they can really use this and burn more fat that way. It's also much more sustainable, okay? So it's the old non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's a huge piece, it's probably the most important piece. And it's interesting because when you look at the longevity studies as well, it's not necessarily the people that are just torturing themselves with exercise, it's the people that are just regularly active, that are metabolically healthy and seem to have long lives. And again, this is coming from someone that truly likes to exercise, and I love to exercise. And a common denominator with a lot of people that are healthy is they do exercise. But exercise is supplemental and is dosed. It's kind of like taking a supplement. Your lifestyle, your baseline, the foundation, that's everything that you want it to be. That's, that's everything that you need. And everything else is just supplemental. It's like, what good is really taking a performance enhancing supplement if you're not even training in the first place, right? So what good is adding the exercise in if you don't have the foundation in the first place? As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.